test, 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 testing, 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 test, 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 testing, test, 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 testing, 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 test, 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 testing, 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 test, ickles, test, ickles. Welcome everyone to episode 732 as a daily mother, a Whoa, the most muscular swole cast, beard cast, broadcast, gain cast, man cast, pimp cast, and bicep cast in the realm. Because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. And hopefully, hopefully, you get as huge and as swole as old Papa Swole. Yo, I wish that for you, fam. I wish that for you today, that today is swole day, not Tuesday. It's swole day. Uh, it's swole day every day. And we are going to get into some nutrition nasties. I got a bunch of tips. Let me see how many I got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll kind of talk about eight. So I got eight nutrition tips I want to go over today. So I'm going to give you not just the tip though. So those of you that are coming in that think that you're only going to get just the tip, those of you that are uh, fans of the taint and fans of the shaft, you're going to get the whole thing. We're just going to start with the tips. We're going to start with the tips. We have to start somewhere, fam. I mean, you can't you can't go balls first. Everyone says that. No one actually can really do it. Uh, Jay Dunnigan on Twitch. Just wanted to stop in and say what's up at work so I can't stay. But we'll listen as always on SoundCloud. Fuh, yeah, bro. Well, welcome. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give you that shout out because I saw that you are in and out. So this is going to be... A banging episode. I'm excited to get here. I hope everyone uh, is tuning in all right. We're looking good on all platforms. Remember, it's a quadcast, so we're live on Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And if you have not yet checked out Papa Swole and follow me on the old Twitch skis, um, first off, in the next couple years, you're all going to be watching me on Twitch. I'm sure of it. However, uh, those of you that are not, it's twitch.tv slash Solnormous. If you don't know what it is, go download it. It is an awesome live streaming platform and the quality and audio is supreme, supreme. So if you're tired of YouTube or Facebook, just saying, just saying, uh, that could be the place for you. What up, my Ninja Swole? What up, Dale? What's going on, Twitch fam? What's up, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and Facebook? But I love all of you and that's why I do all of this. And remember, it's also a podcast on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts so you can catch all those audio gains anywhere. All the episodes are all there. Uh, Let's take a couple questions because a lot of, that just jumps in at the beginning. A lot of you just come in and are looking for handouts, but I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I get it. I get it. Um, let's do a couple of those before we get into the nutrition content. Reven Chist on Reven Chist on Instagram. I have finals, so I temporarily stopped going to the gym. What do I think of that? I think you're putting your school before your fitness. That's what I think. That's an observation. I'm not going to comment on that because I never did that. I worked out no matter what. I fucking got my training in. You could stop going to the gym. I don't care. Whatever your priority is. If you need to, if your finals and doing well on those tests and those exams is your top priority, then make it your top priority. What does it matter what I think? What do I think of that? I think you're going to lose gains, but you're going to do well in your finals. (laughs) That's what I think. That's what I think. How tall are you? Tall enough to make sick fucking gains? Um, Just under six. Was just wondering, was just watching some swole motions on YouTube, catching up while I eat lunch. How are you liking the swole motions? Those of you that are not yet following my vlog on YouTube, I post a couple, I post a couple of those on Facebook and you'll see some clips and stuff, but, um, the full episode, it's pretty much a daily vlog, swole motion, the playlist on my YouTube channel, YouTube at swole normous. Those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'm sure you've caught it or you see it or you watch them. But it's a lot of behind the scenes. So you follow me on Instagram stories, you follow me on Snapchat, and I'll give you kind of some stuff in the moment. But it's like the thoughts of the day. It's the thoughts of the day. Sometimes I talk about things I discussed on phone calls with uh, people, things that are stuff that's on my mind, behind the scenes stuff with what I'm doing and where I'm at, little different talking points. So it's, um, I think it's really cool. It's really great for me. I, I love doing it because it's a great way for me to clear my head and clear my brain and get things off the top of my the top of my dome piece, just like this, just like the daily swole, but it's, um, they're really effective to the point. It gets, it gets all across and they're like two, three, four minutes, stuff like that. Love the afternoon swoles. I can catch while I'm writing patient notes. Nice. Don't screw up. Don't like, don't prescribe someone something that will make their testicles smaller when you're supposed to make their testicles bigger or something. As if like that is what anyone's job is as a medical professional. I don't know why that's the first thing that came out of my brain, but it did. 
You are truly underrated, brother. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm fine being underrated. I'm fine being underrated. You know why I'm fine with being quote underrated. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Maybe like what subscribers on YouTube, that comment came from YouTube. And uh, I get that a lot. I get like, how the hell do you have, do you only have this many subscribers? Who knows? Who knows? You know, this is, um, it, it, the reason why I do the podcast everywhere that the reason why this is on like seven or eight platforms at the same fucking time uh, is because there are valuable people on each one of those platforms. So whether or not there's a thousand watching on one and five watching another, or there's 500 and 500, those are individual human beings. Like, you know, that's you, that's you. Uh, oh, was it kiss, kiss quay quick say, or geez, I can't even, I don't even know what that what your name uh, is. So apologize for butchering that, but you're on YouTube. We got people watching on all different, every single platform people are watching. So, you know, the more places I can be, I might be underrated there numerically, but I'm not underrated overall. I don't, if there's 10 people, those are 10 of you that we're fucking making gains. If there's a thousand people watching, that's a thousand people making sick fucking gains. There's also seven and a half billion people in the world. I mean, it takes time to get recognized or to get discovered or to get distribution and get out there, but we're doing our thing, man. People that they will come, right? If you make gains, they will come. That's what we're doing here. So all of your support. And that's like a long winded way of me saying, thank you. If you didn't pick up on that already, it's my way of saying thank you to each and every single one of you that tunes in every day. And you don't have to watch live for me to be like, you're the fucking, you're part of the fam. You're part of the community. When I say the fam, the community, yeah, of course I have swolenormousx.com in the private community, but everyone that watches, whether you, you might only listen on, you might listen on SoundCloud or Apple podcast, and you might never, ever catch it live. You might never, ever drop a comment. You might not even ever like the post or leave a review on iTunes or on Facebook. You might never even leave a review or any kind of engagement. You're still part of the family. You're still part of the community. You're still part of this. So no matter where you are, if you watch my, check out my Instagram once in a while, you're still a part of it. You're still a part of it and you're an integral part of it. So I don't understate or I don't let anyone or anything and any, any aspect of that um, in any sense go unrecognized. So it's not like one, one type of engagement and only the people that are part of the private community matter That's nowhere near the truth. And I think everyone, I think all of you know that already. I just tweak a couple of things here. Cool. All right, fam. So let's uh let's get right into uh the meat and the potatoes of today's episode. So this is 732. So now that we're all here and we're all amped up and it's a fucking Tuesday. Are we ready, fam? Are we ready to fucking rage? Am I coming through clear? Am I coming through clear? Are you ready to make some sick fucking gains today? I'm serious, man. Ladies, I'm serious. We're about to we're about to fucking do it. We're about to go to town. We're about to go to work. So let's do this. Let's talk about these nutrition tips that I have written down. So I have eight. I have eight of them that I want to discuss. Eight of them that I want to discuss. Eight of them that are pertinent for today's episode. And these are some concepts about nutrition. These are strategies. These are some of the things that I got thinking about doing some of my morning calls with some of the new members. So some of you that uh, I talked to this morning, I talked to a bunch of you that just came into Swolnormous X and the family. So welcome officially. I hope you're enjoying all the content and the training and everything already. But I had this theme come up and it's interesting how that works because I do daily phone calls and I, of course I'm doing all sorts of daily content, but I do daily phone calls with my members and people coming in. And it's funny how, for whatever reason, for whatever reason on any given day, everyone's talking about the same thing. Everyone's got the same I don't have the same topic or one thing just permeates through each conversation. Like it's all the same. So it's really interesting uh, how that works. Sometimes there's just some kind of brain wave that everyone's on the same page and everyone wants to talk about the same thing. So today was one of those days and we we're talking about nutrition uh, and, and with nutrition and with in, in terms of strategy, in terms of individuality. And most of the questions that come into my swole sphere as it, as it were on Facebook messenger on, um, cause I do a lot of, I do a ton. If you guys aren't hooked in, send me a message on Facebook, by the way, that's a great place to interact with me. I'm sending out a lot of updates and dropping a lot of knowledge nukes in messenger. So just go to my Facebook page and uh, send me a message, hit me up and, uh, 
it'll get you on the um, the messaging list for uh, all the updates and things that are going on with the um, with Swole Town and with being absolutely yoked now with the brand and any updates and specials and stuff like that. So when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to nutrition, a lot of people come into the realm and ask a specific question. How do I eat to build muscle? How do I, what should I eliminate? What, what's the best food? Or do, what do you believe in? Do you believe in carbs? Do you believe in ketosis? Do you believe in paleo? What should I eat to lose belly fat? What should I eat to get bigger legs, to get bigger glutes? There's just so many different questions, right? So many different ways that you can ask that, right? There's so many different things that you can want and there's a magic food supposedly there's a certain approach that's going to be perfect for that specific situation okay everyone's different every situation is different now when it comes to these nutrition tips that i'm going to break down for you these are just different strategies and different things that i want you to think about when it comes to your individual nutrition now those of you that are new to the podcast new to the community you might not be familiar with the elimination diet and that elimination process and approach. Just to give a little bit of a background on that, it's a about a six week process where you eliminate highly commonly all allergenic foods and inflammatory foods to retest your sensitivities to see what your body personally responds best and worst to. And that takes time. It takes four, six, eight, ten weeks to go through and to test each one and to do it the right way. But once you do that, you will learn more than any nutritionist, dietitian, fucking doctor can tell you from a blood test or going in and asking questions. Like this is literally, this is literally, this is literally you doing a scientific experiment on yourself. And I say that a lot. You have to be the scientist. You have to put yourself through a scientific experiment. This is the equivalent of you putting yourself through a scientific experiment. You are the subject. You are the subject. We forget that we have the ability to literally test ourselves, literally test ourselves. Uh, Instagram, what's the podcast, bro? The Daily Swole. Swole Normous on Apple Podcasts. Swole Normous on SoundCloud. Ross Schartzer, it takes time, but it gathers more results than anything else will. I agree. I agree. You need to invest the time. You need to invest the time to figure out what foods are best for you. Uh, on YouTube. So nutrition wise to lose fat and build muscle, considering individuals overweight, would you increase calories or decrease? First off, you're not going to build muscle while losing fat. So either focus on overall weight loss or growth. I would do a caloric deficit and I would lift weights, but you're going to lose extra body fat. So, you know, if you're overweight, if you're overweight, just start cutting out the inflammatory food. So that's, it goes back to the first point that everyone should be doing the elimination diet. Everyone, everyone should and does need to do the elimination diet, whether they think they have their shit on lock or not. You don't really know until you actually put this into practice. I promise you, I promise you, you think, you know, but you got no fucking idea. It's like what that MTV, MTV, you know, those MTV cribs and bios and those, you know, you think you know vh1 behind the music you think you know but you have no idea and you don't you don't have any idea until you actually put this into practice so that being said let's talk about some of the different tips i got for you for nutrition today the first one is timing the first one is nutritional timing and that means when you're eating when you're actually eating your food so these are these tips are not so much tips because on an individual basis it depends these are more tips and pointers to think about when you are customizing your own nutrition, okay? So granted, this is assuming, and this and one of those tips, one of these pressure points is the elimination diet, but we'll get to that as number three. These are in, in no particular order, by the way. So the first one is timing. Are you doing, are you eating six meals a day, twice, twice a day? Are you eating before your workouts, after workouts? When are you consuming your carbs, your protein? These are not necessarily, there's a right or wrong answer, but these are different concepts. So you can choose when you're eating during the day. If you're eating or doing intermittent fasting, if you're doing complete fasting, if you're doing eating first thing in the morning, if you're doing whatever, when you're consuming your nutrients. So number one is timing. Okay. So you can customize your timing and this is, this is going to be, what's the podcast? This is the daily fucking swole Abraham <laughs> on Instagram. Someone just asked twice what the podcast was. Just go to SoundCloud or go to Apple podcast. It's called the Daily Swole. My name is Swole Normus. If you can't find that, 
you have a lot more problems. If you can't find that, considering you're watching it live, um, you have bigger issues than finding my podcast. It's everywhere. So yeah, I, I love, fuck, I love live streaming. I love live streaming. I love these comments popping up. So timing when you're eating, your style of eating, okay? That's a big one. So that's one thing that you can customize. Preparation, meal prep, the, the famous meal prep. First off, I don't know where, I don't know where, why, or how meal prep became such a fucking like obelisk, monolithic, just absolutely massive hurdle that has to be overcome. Meal prep. You know what another name for meal prep is? Making fucking food. It comes before eating fucking food. When did meal prep become a huge fucking problem? Oh, but I struggle with meal prep. I struggle. You struggle with making food and eating it, you fucking idiot. That goes for anyone. Any of you watching or listening has had an issue with meal prep. You fucking make it. Well, I don't have time today. So you make it in advance. Have you ever heard of a fucking microwave or a stove? You can heat food up or eat it cold. Magic. Meal prep is the easiest fucking thing. You just make the food. Well, I don't have a lot of time in the morning. Then do in the evening. Well, I have a few kids. Well, make extra and put in the fridge. Tupperware. Like fucking shit. Just make the food, right? Meal prep. But meal prep means finding the time to do it. And that I do understand, okay? You have to figure out what's best for your schedule to prepare your food. Whether you make it, if you work at home, you can make food at home or just go to the fridge and eat when you want. And this is where I'm, some of the, I don't wanna get, I don't wanna step on the toes of some of the other tips. But, um, but meal prep is easy. You just figure out a time when to fucking do it and you do it and you get used to it. You get used to making a bunch of food at once and you put it into fucking containers. It's simple. So whether or not you put, it all into one big container and you take out a little bit every day or you put into individual containers, easiest fucking thing in the world. Plus you can look up a thousand pictures on Google in two seconds. You see a bunch of Tupperwares lined up. People make a lot of rice or a lot of sweet potatoes or a lot of grass fed beef, whatever. And then a little bit in each one, big shocker, surprise. Wow. It's so challenging and it's so confusing. No, it's not. Make the food. Meal prep comes before eating it. You need to make your food before you eat it. That's what meal prep is. Okay. So done. Figure out a time to meal prep if you need to, or prepare what you need to prepare, right? And someone just posted a great quote, failure to plan is to plan to fail. Yes, if you don't have a plan, if you're not prepared, you are more likely to not get the shit that you need to get done, done. Now, uh, food choice, elimination. I just said this, so I'm just gonna breeze over this, this, this one here, uh, what foods you're actually consuming. Meal prep is great, but you need to be preparing the right foods, right? And that's usually where people screw up. So if you're not doing the elimination diet, you're already kind of, eh, you're changing the timing, changing what you're cooked, but you're not eating the right food. So if you're not doing the elimination diet, you're not really figuring out what you should be eating. You know, you're already kind of missing the point. The point is you need to be consuming the right foods and then everything else kind of falls into place. It really does. Uh, number four that I got for you is ease of consumption. So some of you have, some of you have jobs where you can't necessarily sit down and put out a placemat and a fork and a knife. You know, there's a couple of crossovers with some of these tips or, or topics, but the ease of consumption, how quickly can you consume it? That's why I love sweet potatoes. I keep it whole and I fucking eat it like an ice cream cone. I rip off the little nub root stub at the end and I just fucking eat the sweet potato. I just eat it literally like an ice cream cone. I'll hold it. I'll put a little paper towel at the bottom and I'll eat the sweet potato. I'll just eat it. They're delicious. They're, it's just perfect. Boom, done. And then I'll eat my beef or my broccoli and my kale or whatever I'll, whatever I do after, you know, in terms of the fat and the protein, but boom, done. Okay. So that's how I do it. Ease of consumption. Some of you need to eat quickly. Some of you can use a knife and a fork and we'll talk about that. That's going to be the, one of the next uh, parts, but the ease of consumption, how easy it is to eat, how easy it is to prepare, you know, all those different things. Those are subtleties that you have to learn. You might be okay with two different foods, right? Let's say you're okay with two different types of food, but one is a lot easier to eat and one's a lot easier to, and that same one is a lot easier to prepare and to make portable. So obviously that one's going to be the food that you're probably going to eat the most because it's easy to make and it's easy to consume when you want to consume it. And that's a huge part of your, uh, of your nutrition because you have to be consistent. And if you can't be consistent, then you're going to have a lot of issues. So handling is the next one. So if you need silverware, or you can eat it with your hands. I know it sounds like a silly topic, but I think that plays a lot more than most people give credit to. If you 
are in a situation where you just can't sit down and have a plate. You have a Tupperware, you have to open it up. Sometimes it helps if you have, let's say, a whole sweet potato. You might not want to mash it up because then you have to scoop it with your fucking fingers and you need a fork and you have to be shoving into your mouth. If you have a sweet potato, you can just grab it. Just fucking get it in your mouth. Swallow it. Oh, but you shouldn't eat fast. Fuck it. Get it in your mouth. Get it in your fucking hole. Everyone's so worried about, well, eat slowly, chew your food slowly, uh, take your time, chew each one 23 times or 32 times, get the food in your body, just eat it, just fuck it. And it's a sweet potato, so you don't really have to chew it, right? What are you chewing? Like the orange part? You're just, mm-hmm. it's, it's just mush. It's mush. Just fucking eat it and move on with your life. Eat it and move on with your day. Don't worry about how fast you eat it. If you have 10 minutes to eat because of your job, guess what, fam? You got 10 minutes to fucking eat. So you're not lounging around relaxing. Eat your food. If you have to run to the bathroom, be like, oh, I need to, I got to run to the bathroom quick, boss. Grab your little cooler, go to the bathroom, okay? Because you can spend five or 10 minutes in the bathroom, right? Look, I've done this before. When I've had to, I've done it. You take a bathroom break, you go in there and you fucking shove some food in your mouth. No one's going to be like, wow, you were in the bathroom for five minutes. Wow. All right. Or 10 minutes. No one's going to hound you for being in the bathroom for 10 minutes. Just say, okay, so I had to take a crap. What do you want from me? What? You're going to write me up for taking a shit? Okay. So think about that. You can, I'm not saying it's romantic, but some of you might have a really strict job and really strict timing and really strict situation where the only break or relief that you can really get if you want to get more meals in, if you're trying to, you know, eat smaller meals more frequently, you might have to just run to the bathroom real quick and kind of eat it on the way or something. It's not that dramatic, right? It's just fucking eat the food. I think we have this whole idea that I think we have this whole, um, the bathroom isn't the most sanitary place to eat, bro. You pump gas, you pump gas, like gas stations, handles at the supermarket, Shopping carts, these things are fucking much more disgusting than a bathroom. You know how many germs are just on a fucking doorknob? Trust me, if you start looking at things under a magnifying glass, you start thinking about dirt in a lot, in a much different way. Stuff is so fucking dirty. Bathrooms are probably cleaner because they actually clean them with Clorox and stuff. No one wipes down the fucking door handles. Think about that next time you go into a Starbucks. All right, fam, uh, let's keep it moving here. So... <laughs> gross, right? Uh, speed. So ease of consumption and speed. Now speed, you can think about speed for eating speed for, uh, preparation. So that's just put, you know, a lot of these things, like I said, cross over, but there are different ways to think about them. So think about how quickly it is for you to prep your food. If you are making meals for the next couple days, and it's going to take you six hours in the kitchen to make your ole pasta fagis, or whatever the fuck you're making, with all these little garnishes and all this stuff. Okay, if you love to cook and you have six hours to spare, whatever, I I don't care. But if you don't have six hours and let's say I'm sitting here saying, you have to make these foods and make this these meals and it's gonna take you six hours and you say, well, Papa Swallow, I only got one. I only got one fucking hour. So how am I gonna take six hours to make food in one hour? Okay, so those foods or that recipe isn't right for you. That's why I don't hand out these recipes like eat these foods do this eat six ounces it's not convenient for everyone plus when you do the elimination diet you figure out what foods are best for you and then you can start figuring out okay how you're going to prepare it and looking up recipes it's called google takes 30 seconds and you'll get 10 billion recipes for any food combination you want in the world in the world someone's eaten the food that you want in the way that you haven't thought of yet and put it online. That's how many people are in the fucking world. Any combination of food that you put into Google, it will spit out a billion fucking recipes. It shocks me how lazy some people are. Literally, if you want a recipe with grass-fed beef, broccoli, spinach, and this, you type those ingredients in, put in recipe next to it on Google, and you will get a billion fucking results with all these different styles of cooking, breakdowns, videos, everything. So the most important thing that you need to determine that Google cannot tell you is you need to do the elimination diet. You need to eliminate these foods, retest yourself, and then you can start analyzing and figuring out recipes and preparation capacity, speed, timing, uh, all that stuff. Once you have the elimination, it makes things a lot simpler. Uh, the handling. Oh, I said the handling, speed, or, or, or did I skip to handling? I think I skipped to handling before I talked about speed. All right, so let's go over what we've done so far. Those of you that are just tuning in. So some nutrition pointers 
we talked about nutrition timing, uh, nutrition prep, elimination diet, the ease of consumption, the speed, the handling, if you can eat it with your hands or eat it with silverware. And the next one is going to be kind of a simple one, but uh, heated or unheated. Now, I love cold food. I love my beef cold. I like I love cold brew coffee. I used to be the kind of person I love cold pizza. I love cold. I'll eat cold. And the reason why I like cold food is first off, I don't like using microwaves. Second off, I'm lazy. And third off, so I'm not sure if it's because I'm just lazy and I've just acclimated myself to liking cold food because it's convenient or I actually like cold food. I think it's a little bit of both. I just like, hey, if something's in the refrigerator, I want to take it out. I don't want to put it in a microwave and radiate my fucking food. I also don't want to wait another minute and a half to eat. I want to take it out and put it in my mouth. So that's what she said, right? Ah, boom, tsh, thank you. I'll be here all week, literally every single day, every single fucking day, fam. Uh, so I will just eat things cold. But if you are a stickler and you don't mind a microwave, you don't mind what a microwave could be doing to your food, which I just don't like psychologically and you know, I think there's more and more research that shows that it's changing the fucking molecular compounds with all that shit. I don't know. I don't, I don't like to, I don't like the taste. I don't like the way a microwave heats up my food. That's just preference. If anything else is preference. So you might have a microwave or a stove handy. So is what you're eating something that you are okay with and you're fine with eating? Now there's a point where it comes down to, okay, eat what the fuck you need to eat. Shut up. Stop complaining. If you have a goal, eat it. But there's also, okay, you don't want to be miserable your entire life. Fitness needs to be a part of your life. It needs to be a complete, complete, engaged, intertwined aspect of your life. And if you are miserable eating this food that you hate when you have it cold and you love it when it's warm, it might be something where you heat it up at home before you leave and you put it in a container or something that keeps it warm until you eat it at lunchtime. You know, those are some things that you have to measure out for yourself, no pun intended, right? That you have to weigh out for yourself. How important is it for you to have your food piping hot? How important is it for you? Maybe not at all. Maybe a four out of 10, maybe a little bit, maybe once in a while you don't mind. Maybe you don't have, I don't know. I don't know your personal situation, but this is just literally what I'm, this is literally what I'm discussing and, and why this is what hangs people up. This is some of the shit that hangs people up hangs people up, that keeps people from getting results, that keeps people from making change, from making that progress. This is what holds a lot of you up, thinking about one of these things or having a quote unquote issue with your the speed or how easy it is to consume something. Like that should not hold you up from getting your results. That should not hold you up for making progress. But for a lot of you, it's holding you back. It's holding you back and um, we can stop that. We can minimize that. How do you keep yourself from getting burned out on chicken? I don't eat chicken. Chicken, I think, is the most overrated food creature. Chicken's fucking blow. Eggs are cool. Chicken meat just tastes like I used to like chicken wings. I like, uh, chicken wings are one of my favorite cheat foods. Oh, I eat grass-fed beef. You just get more nutrients. And I'm not, you know, it depends on if you're plant-based or whatever your personal preference is, but I don't get burned out from it. I don't get burned out for it. I think it's just because it's high in quality fats. I think it's because it's higher in nutrients and you get more from it. So my body craves it more. I don't get any kind of like craving to eat chicken all the time. I actually don't like it at all, really. And I think that's because just of like the, it's just not that satisfying in terms of nutrients and quality calories for your body. It's just some fucking protein and fats and carbs are uh, much more Fats and, fats and carbs are much more important in terms of what your body needs for fuel. Your body doesn't really use protein that much for fuel. Fit fam, uh, but is it bad to eat a lot of red meat, meat in a week? Uh, I think, honestly, I think the, jur the, the jury's kind of out on that. You'll see a lot of people that are plant-based, they'll throw a lot of seeds in your face, but some people eat meat every day and don't have an issue because let's say they're doing the carnivore diet or they are doing um, ketosis and they're eating, you know, red meat frequently and they have, and they have a clean bill of health essentially. So those, anyone that throws like studies in your face oftentimes is just, you know, I mean, I, there's, there's a study out there that pretty much proves everything one way or the other. And someone else is going to have some kind of countering argument 
or an opinion, whether it's a moral opinion and a moral stance on animals and life and shit as we know it. So everyone's got an opinion on everything. But truth of the matter is, we still have people that smoke fucking cigarettes every day in some of these countries that eat diets high in fat, but they have things like low stress. They get a lot of exercise and they live to be 110, 120, very vibrant and active. So is smoking bad for you or are the 200 chemicals that people add to tobacco what's really killing people? Or is it that the fact that more people that smoke are lazy and don't exercise and also eat processed foods, does that come into play because they're not smoking and exercising, they're smoking and being lazy and eating garbage as well because a lot of people that smoke are not healthy in other aspects of their life too or they have stressful jobs. And so there's a lot of, I mean, there, there's just different ways you can add things into the equation. There's a lot of individuality when it comes to, uh, when, when, when it comes to just nutrition and health and long life because you have evidence, you have examples of people that have done what's seemingly the opposite, but then they survive. So there's a lot with genetics we don't know yet. Red meat is good for men. Good. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm just, I literally, when I, that's why I promote the elimination process because I'm not going to tell anyone to do anything that they don't believe in that may or may not be good for them. And any fitness professional that's out there really, and I mean this, and if you're a fitness professional and you're looking at this and you're listening to this, I want you to listen up carefully. I think any fitness professional, I think any fitness professional, whether you're a trainer, whether you're a quote fitness expert, whatever you are, if you're giving out diet plans or meal plans or selling those fucking things online, I think you're a criminal. I think giving out meal plans, telling someone that you have never met, that you do not know, even with some disclaimers, I think it's almost criminal activity. You're literally telling someone to eat something potentially that could kill them. Of course, the person purchasing the meal plan, the person that's on the other end, you as an individual, you need to take responsibility, of course, if you're allergic violently to peanut butter and you don't tell anyone or you see peanut butter on, ooh, I should eat peanut butter, and you know you're really allergic to it, and you eat and you die, that's your fault. But there's a there's a, a lot of people that would literally give you, oh, eat this on this day, and this is what you should eat, and eat this amount, six ounces of this, and half a cup of that. How the fuck do you know? How the fuck do you know? That's a random cookie cutter. You cannot customize that shit. Oh, you customize it based on caloric value? Here, eat these foods that may or may not be extremely inflammatory to you, but limit how much. Okay, eat this poison. This th These foods are poison. We don't know, but these foods are poison to your body, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. Just don't eat too many of them. Only eat 2,000 calories of this poison. I mean, it may not be poison. We don't know because we're not doing the elimination, but eat these foods. You'll get great results. You'll get shredded in eight weeks. Here you go, fam. There you go. That's what people do. That's what these fucktards are selling. And they're getting very specific with what they recommend and what they prescribe, but they're not nutritionists. They're not dietitians. Not to mention most nutritionists and dietitians are fucking retarded anyway, because they were taught by re fucking stupid, retarded people. So the education system is long since broken, especially with nutrition. And we're going to nutritionists and dietitians and these fucking people that throw a degree or education, great. When someone says, when, when there's any kind of proof that someone's educated in a certain realm like that, it's almost a sign that eh, may, I need to observe a little bit more and see what I think myself. Because when you have someone who's educated without a lot of practical experience, think about this. They're educated. What, that, what does that mean? That means that someone else gave them information. It's like a game of fucking telephone. It's like a, an official, socially acceptable game of telephone. Some dude in a classroom told this person something and tested them on an exam to tell them back what they taught them in the class over the course of a couple months. They did well. They left that place, and now they're telling you the same thing, and you need to believe them. Holy fucking shit. That's scary when you think about what nutrition, what education is. It's scary. You're memorizing and learning what someone else told you. So there can be some disparity between what is real and what is not real or what is true and what is not true. And we learn stuff every day. The great thing about now an education and learning is phenomenal. It's excellent. That's how we progress as a society. I get it. But what's great is now information is accessible all the time right here. Take out your phone. 
and look up information. Now you can get a lot of information. You have to know how to look objectively and how to have a head on your own shoulders and know what to pay attention to and what to listen to and what to value and what not to value. But, but you have all this right here. You have everything um, on the, on your cellular device, whether it's an iPhone, Android, who the fuck cares? All right, let's go. So that was almost the last one. Uh, the last one I had written down here just for was heavy versus light and also timing. So timing was number one. Timing was number one. And the heavy and the light is referring to whether the meal is heavy or light, like as a big meal. So what I would call a heavy meal, for example, would be, let's say uh, you are, uh, let's just call it, let's just call it beef or chicken, whatever kind of protein source you want. If you're, you know, or, you know, I, I don't want to start throwing out inflammatory foods. I don't care if you're plant-based or not, but uh, like a, like a whole big meal. Now, a heavy meal like that isn't necessarily ideal for someone who's on their way to the gym or maybe right after the gym immediately. Maybe you, your sympathetic nervous system hasn't re reset yet. Maybe you haven't come back to resting levels um, and you're still a little bit jacked up and you're going to get nauseous if you eat right after a workout. That's very common. So some of you might want to go with a lighter meal right after a workout or you're on your way to the gym, but you get sick if you don't eat first. You're not going to have steak, potatoes, and broccoli, and have a huge, massive meal. You're going to eat light or maybe, you know, minimal piece of fruit, who knows, but something light before you go to the gym. So that's like where the timing has to do with things. That's where the timing becomes more effective. Um, how you, how you time your meals. So when you're eating, so that goes back to the original timing, but the volume, the volume and the actual type of the food you're consuming. So again, it comes back to the elimination diet. What foods are you able to eat? What food is best for your body? You need to know what foods are best. It all comes down to that. The timing doesn't matter. The prep doesn't matter. The ease of consumption doesn't matter. The speed, the handling, heated, unheated, none of that matters. If you don't know what foods you should be eating, if you're not eating the right fucking foods, none of that matters. Josia on Instagram, I eat heaviest and the crappiest after the gym. Makes me feel even more like an animal. And the crappiest after the gym, well, you're destroying your progress. Don't eat crappy after the gym. Don't pay attention to that Instagram shit where people do legs and then eat garbage. Yeah, it's going right to my butt. No, it's not. It doesn't happen. They're lying. They're just saying shit. They're trying to pretend like they don't eat fucking perfect all the fucking time. They have one little cheat meal and they talk about it going to their ass. Does not happen. So don't eat crappy after the gym. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. You don't just pig out because you got to work out in. You don't get your treat. Cause Gervaisi, everything in moderation. Absolutely fucking not. I don't believe in that at all. I think that's the biggest, that's the biggest, that's the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is making people believe that everything is good in moderation. That's absolutely not true. Laziness is not good in moderation. Being a lazy fuck, being someone who's fat and out of shape and disrespectful of their life and their body is not good in moderation. Moderation is what breeds Moderation is what breeds mediocrity. Moderation is what keeps a lot of people from succeeding because they believe that everything should be in moderation. So they don't take anything seriously. They don't go all in on anything. They get half pregnant on their career. They get half pregnant on their training. They get half pregnant on anything that they are passionate about. They kind of put it to the side. Oh, it's a hobby. It's a hobby. I love fitness, but it's a hobby. Well, do you love your hobby? Then make it a fucking career and stop pussing out and wasting your life doing something or being stuck in a cubicle in a job that you fucking hate, you know, make your passion, your career, make what you enjoy doing something you do every fucking day. That's not a pipe dream, fam. What do you think I do? What do you think I've created for myself? What do you think I've been doing my whole life? Okay. So I wasn't destined to be a personal trainer. Like I didn't, I got tired of it after a whole career of doing one-on-one -on -one training. You burn out of things after a while. I got tired of it, but I was in the gym every day. I was in the gym every day. I was in the gym training. Like that was my work. That was my life. That's what I did in the gym, in the gym. Like that's, that's a great fucking life. Why I'm in the gym. I go to the gym and I, I train with people. I joke around. We fucking have fun. We train hard. I work out. I go home. I have some hour. You have some hours in the afternoon. Anyone who's a personal trainer knows that you used to, or if you're currently or used to be, you'd work from 6 a.m. to 10, 9 or 11, whatever. 
And then you have a few hours in the afternoon, you know, we go to the beach and hang out or you go and you work out yourself or you go home and take a nap or you go to the movies or you go eat food or go do whatever, you know, and then you have a couple of clients in the evening, you go home and you fucking do it again. You know, you're not stressed. You're not stressed. You're living in a healthier environment. You're helping people do better. And okay. And some people do that their whole careers and they love that to, to death, but they're doing what they enjoy. You know, imagine doing something. Everyone thinks about their job as, okay, their job is what they have to do. Whether you're an accountant, whether you work in a, in a store, whatever it is. If I said you were going to be a horse trainer for the rest of your life and you fucking hate horses, you're like, oh my God, no fucking way. I'm dead forever. Fuck. Well, do you love doing what you do now? It's the same thing. You just think that that's the way it has to be. So my little rant with this came from that comment, everything in moderation. Everything in moderation, if moderation is what fucking works. And I just don't think it does. I think anyone that who's had success in their life, success with their nutrition, like we're talking about today, if you have success with your nutrition, if you want the aesthetic benefits of fitness, in addition to, I want to lose weight and be healthy or so forth, you need to get obsessed. You need to do it relentlessly. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Moderation will not, uh, will not bring you results. Oh, yeah, you meant food. I know. I, I, I figured that, but I just wanted to talk about that general phrase. But I don't believe that either. I don't think that. everything in moderation with food it goes the same. It goes the same way. Everything in moderation with food will give you either moderate results or moderate inflammation or maybe major inflammation. Maybe what you think you're consuming moderately is causing major issues in your body. Some people just like touch peanut butter and they can fucking die. So I wouldn't call that having capacity to do moderation with peanut butter, right? So what's the difference between that and grains? Let's say you have grains and you have bloating, joint pain, this and the other. You're not going to moderately consume bread. It fucks you up. It's not good for you and it jacks you up. So I don't believe that. I don't believe anything in moderation. Yeah, I think if you, you, do, you do moderation if you don't want amazing results and you have to be honest with yourself. You gotta be, you gotta be honest with yourself with what kind of results you're going to get with moderation. If you're fine with getting eh, decent results, hit or miss and put in moderate effort. Okay, go for it. But if you want, I want six pack abs. I want to look big. I want to be ripped. I want to be shredded. Oh, really? You do realize you have to wrap your entire life and make fitness your number one priority and work your fucking ass off and go to extremes and be obsessed, right? What do you think a physique takes? It's not a natural way for a body to look, to be like lean, ripped and muscular. That's not natural. That's why people don't maintain it naturally. That's why you go through phases and you kind of gain some water and gain some fat and go through and you cycle in and out because you can't keep your, uh, your body that lean for long periods of time. Naturally, your testosterone, you kind of bonk out and crash. Uh, that's why most of the people that you see on Facebook and Instagram and stuff that are shredded all year round are taking some kind of anabolics, low levels of, or high levels of, of stuff to keep them full and muscular and lean with energy. And while they are extremely low body fat, because it's not natural, the body will crash body bonks out crashes. Sandy Campbell, I'm a lunch lady, so we can have insurance, but I'm also a personal trainer because I love it. Yes, I am tired from being so busy, but worth it. Well, yeah, but you do, you do both. You're doing both. You do what you have to do. You do what you need to do. You do what you have to do. But when you can correlate that with what you want to do, then you're really hitting the nail on the head. So I think a lot of you, it depends. It, it really does depend. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you how to live your, your life. I'm just telling you how I think a life should be well-lived from my experience, from what I see, because I talk to, don't forget, I talk to each and every one of you especially those of you that are members of Swarmus X, I talk to you. So I hear what you're, I hear what you're going through. I hear what you're struggling with. I know what, what you're going through mentally. That's why these episodes really hit home because it's in your own voice. A lot of you are saying the same thing when we talk on the phone and you're struggling with the same things. You're getting locked up and caught up on the wrong concepts. You're getting stuck on meal prep, right? You're getting stuck on the speed or, okay, well, I don't have time to eat. I'm running out of time. I don't have, it's because First off, you need to figure out what foods you should be consuming, period. But then you need to go through these different tips and these different talking points that we discussed today and formulate your nutrition that best fits 
your life, right? Like this microphone, I play around with, I play around with the settings all the time to try to optimize it and tweak it to fit my voice best. Okay. And those of you that are watching Facebook, YouTube, you're going to get different kind of input than Twitch. And of course the podcast, it gets, you know, streamed differently than I get edited or clipped or whatever. But, you know, I'm always tweaking on settings and adjusting to customize it best for me. So if one of you came over here, just for an example, if more of you came over here and you started talking into this microphone, it might not sound good. It might sound off. It might sound completely weird because your voice and your approach and your all those details is not ideal for my setup, which means my individuality with nutrition, with fitness, with all that doesn't relate to your individuality, your schedule, your fitness, your goals, your interests, okay, your struggles, your mental approach. Maybe you have to think about something. Maybe if you don't work out first thing in the morning, you're finished. Maybe you're just someone who just cannot get it together to work out in the evening. So then you know that you have to work out in the morning. For me, for example, okay, I, it's possible for me to work out in the evening. I prefer the morning, but lately I've been on more of like an afternoon evening schedule, which makes it, you know, not my first choice, but okay, you know, I'm not going to be up till four in the morning and then get up at six and work out. That's just foolish. Then I'm just going to hurt myself. So it's individualizing your life and your nutrition, your training to you. Don't forget how much capacity for individualization that you have with all aspects of your life, with your training, you can customize and make your life the way you want. You really do. And you really can. You can absolutely make your life the way you want it. You're not backed up into a corner. We just pretend or we think like we are because it makes it easier to stay in our little corner, right? It's easy to stay in your little box. It's easy to follow the leader. It's easy to just do what everyone else does. It's easy to live in moderation. It's easy to be average. It's easy to lift weights, but not go until when it burns. It's easy to kind of conveniently go to fast food places or get someone, you know, get a pre-made meal at Whole Foods or at the supermarket. It's easier. Okay. So easier, easy is a first sign of this is not going to fucking work really well. That's the first sign. If something's easy, you should be skeptical. Nothing is fucking easy. Nothing that's worthwhile is easy. Nothing that is valuable is fast. Okay. If you want something expensive that you need to make a lot of money and that takes time unless you win the lottery, right? So it takes time. It takes time to build a physique. It takes time to build a business. It takes time to build a relationship. It takes time to grow a child. Those of you that are parents out there, your child isn't 15 overnight. Well, it seems that way. They just grow so fast. No, they don't. They grow the same speed as everyone does. Everyone grows the same speed. A year is a year is a year is a year. Your perception of a year is different. Everyone, they just grow so fast. No, 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 no. Things take a long time. Human beings take a long time to grow and to develop. And your progress is going to take a long time to grow and develop. Lynn, I just woke up. Well, welcome to the, welcome to the fucking show, man. Welcome to the gain train. Welcome. Willkommen. Hello. Gotta go hard. Yeah. Yeah. I work at 8 PM. If I pass eight, I won't feel better. Well, good. You work at 8 PM. Good. Fucking get it done. Uh, we got some, all right. I think everyone was listening to me fucking rant. Everyone was loving that rant because the comments are slowed down. I know sometimes when I go off, Everyone just sits there, sits back and lets me just fucking teabag them with knowledge. So I appreciate everyone's attention today for 732. I think if you follow these tips, but you start off with the elimination process, that is uh, the number one. That's the, that's the number one thing that you need to do. Because if you don't, if you don't, then you are thinking about things that are too higher level. So if we're talking about the, if we're talking about like a pyramid, right? If we're talking about like a food pyramid or we're talking about any style or any style of pyramid where you need to have a strong foundation. I, I always, I always use the, um, the idea, the analogy of a pyramid because it's a wider base and you need that strong foundation. So don't not, I'm not talking about the, I'm not talking about the, uh, the food pyramid, that bullshit, but you need to have the right foundation. The right foundation is eating the right foods. I don't care about the speed, whether you can heat it or not, whether you're using silverware, the preparation, I don't care about any of that if you're preparing the fucking wrong food. So make sure you're preparing the right foods by doing the elimination diet first, making sure that you're eating the foods that are best for your body and then customize. 
Customize, fam. Customize your nutrition. Customize your life. You have every ability. You have every ability to customize your fitness, your training, your nutrition. You have every ability to do all of this yourself. I want to repeat that one more time. You have every ability to do this all yourself. You have every ability to individualize, individualize your nutrition and your training. There is no one, no one, no one that can tell you that you didn't get results doing things a certain way. If you got results doing things that way, how can anyone tell me that the way that I train or the way that I eat doesn't work? How does it, how does it not work? Prove it, prove it. I have a physique. I have strength. I have aesthetics. I have whatever, like I feel X, Y, and Z. Like, you know, what are you measuring this against? There's no right or wrong. There's no vegan is the answer. Meat is bad or veganism is bad. Meat is good. There's no answer where this is the end. There's a reason why we can digest all those foods because I think we are perfectly capable of digesting all those foods. Why is that such a hard thing to understand? Why is that such a hard thing to grasp that there are many different ways to success, many different paths to success? One thing is for certain or seemingly for certain, one thing has been shown to be quite accurate and consistent. It's the experience your body has on this earth. So it's your exposure to the elements. It's your environment that is most responsible for your successes, diseases, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, all those things. It's your exposure to your environment, whether or not you're living under power lines your whole life, drinking, you know, poison tap water or eating processed foods every day or not exercising or smoking. Those factors, those environmental factors are more important than your genetics and you know, what color your skin is, which I guess has to do with your genetics and, you know, those types of things. It's about what you expose your body to. It's what you expose your body to. Okay. To each his own. Yeah. To each their own. I mean, in my opinion, if you want results, you got to go all in. Depends on what kind of results you want. You want average results, then do average work. You want exceptional results, then you got to fucking get obsessed. You got to get really invested and involved. That's extremely important to understand is what do you want out of your training? What do you want out of your fitness? And you're going to have to work or put in the work accordingly based on what that is. On Twitch, Mike Olson, would you say calories or exercise has a bigger impact on weight loss? I've been trying to lose weight. Uh, not calories, what you're eating. If you're trying to lose weight, they're both. They're both 100% important. They're both 100% important. Exercise is important and what you're eating. So start right there with your question, what you mentioned, the word calories, don't worry about calories. I know that sounds weird. And most people are going to be like, you have to have a caloric deficit. Well, trust me, if you start cutting out inflammatory foods and you start shedding extra water and body fat from the corrected hormone balance that you have now, because your body isn't fighting invaders and fighting inflammation, you're going to lose weight. You're going to lose extra water weight and extra body fat that your body is storing from elevated cortisol levels and so forth. So that's where you should start. Then you can start looking at the caloric consumption. But if you're eating the right foods, you're not going to really struggle with eating too many calories. Trust me. It's hard to overeat quality foods like, you know, vegetables and sweet potatoes and shit. It's hard to overeat that. Joseph Jackson, what's the best meat or source of protein to consume to build muscle? There is no best. Nothing exists in this world that's best. That's subjective. Um, I personally consume pastured eggs, not pasteurized, pastured eggs. I eat 100% grass-fed beef. I do a lot of bone broth, sweet potatoes, kale, vegetables, all that stuff. So there is no best source of protein. That's why that question right there, see what it, see what it comes down to? Elimination diet. You have to figure out what's the best source of protein for you. You, Joseph. You, you, you. So thank you so much, fam. Thank you for everyone. Thank you to everyone for joining me for episode 732 of the Daily Mother, a swole, the most muscular swole cast, beard cast, broadcast, gain cast in the realm because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. Remember, fam, every day you can catch the quadcast, twitch.tv slash swolenormous. 
Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. A couple things, make sure if you're not subscribed on YouTube, go check out the latest vlog, The Swole Motion. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. And uh, so check that out today and go drop a comment on the latest vlog yesterday uh, was about two years in a row, no days off for two years. And it's just some good perspective. And I'm dropping those almost every day, if not every day. So go check that out. And the more feedback and the more engagement that I have over there, the more frequency, uh, the more frequency and the frequently and the more content I will drop over there. So I know it's growing uh, slow and steady which is how, uh, how everything that lasts a long fucking time does. You know what I'm saying, fam? You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I actually made it today. Hell yeah, I'm glad you made it here too, Megs. So Russell, thank you on Lena. Thank you for watching on YouTube. Thanks for all the uh, dropping all the, the knowledge and the comments and the support. Thanks for dropping the biceps on all channels. And remember, if you haven't yet caught the podcast, SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, and all my content, Instagram, all day, er day, Papa Swolio. Oh, 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 oh out. Peace, my geese, deuce, my goose. I'll see you all in Swole Normous S. Those of you men, women, special offer running right now, two-year anniversary. Come join the fam, SwoleNormousX.com for all the nutrition and uh, fitness programming, all streaming, all HD, uh, none of this cookie cutter program bullshit, just the best and constant releases of full classes, full workouts. It's lit like a fucking tit. So I'll see you all in there and I'll see you tomorrow for 733. Peace out, fam. Later Twitch, later Instagram and Facebook and YouTube's and all these streams. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Peace out.